Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I beg to get your attention. Madam Speaker, kindly give me, lend me your ear. I rise understanding order number 223, which is report on select committee. Madam Speaker, standing order number 223 reads as follows. Report of select committee shall be prepared and kept in the same form as the votes and procedures of a committee of the whole in such other form as may be prescribed. Number two states as follows. The report of a select committee having been adopted by a majority of the senators shall be signed by the chairperson on behalf of the committee. And then number three, if the chairperson or, or vice chairperson is absent or is not readily available, the select committee shall nominate another member of the committee to sign the report. Madam Speaker, I want to stop on 223.2. Madam Speaker, the order that you've just mentioned the report of the select committee was tabled in this house yesterday. But if you look at page three of that report, that report was only adopted by four members, which is one, two, three, and four. The total number of members who sit in a select committee are nine. So, Madam Speaker, this report cannot be discussed in this house. It is not properly before the house. It is against our standing orders. And we cannot, you had reiterated clearly, that anything which is presented in this house cannot be rushed. And Madam Speaker, there is a big problem that we are facing, where we rush things. And you know, traditionally, any amendments to our standing orders will not even apply in this house. So, Madam Speaker, I really would beg you to pay attention to what I'm saying because I have the report here and I stood in a very important standing order and I can see the majority... Senator, yes. Senator yes, I am Speaker. actually looking at that report as you're reading Thank to you, internalize what you're arguing on the floor of the Thank House. Thank you, Madam Speaker. So, Madam Speaker, this report, I want to reiterate, that is not properly before this House it hasn't been tabled properly in conformity with our standing orders. And this is the danger, Madam Speaker, of rushing to amend standing orders to be able to accommodate certain interests. The practice and traditions of this House, Madam Speaker, has been that whenever this committee, Procedures and Rules Committee, sits down to amend standing orders, they do not apply to this session. In fact, they apply to the, next, to the next parliament. So that, it mid, mid, you know, we don't change the rules of the game, you know, midways. So, Madam Speaker, I'd like you to find that this report is not properly before this House for it to go back. And I don't know what the standing orders say. Once you, you sneak in a report to the House, which has not been adopted, because this report has not been adopted, and will be violating our standing orders by discussing a report which has only been signed by four members. Number one, it has been signed by the chairperson, who is the speaker of this house. Number two, it has been signed by Senator Wakili Hilary Kiprotichigay, who is a member. Number seven, it was signed by Senator Sheikh Mohammed Abbas, and then number eight, it was signed by Senator Joseph Nyutu Nyugi MP. This report was not adopted by five other members. If you do your basic mathematics, nine minus four is five. It is not four. I beg to uh, submit. What's your point of order, Majority Leader? Give me the mic, please. Thank you. Uh, Madam Speaker, I'm looking at the report uh, that is before us. First of all, uh, you know, we've gone against 
very cardinal rules of procedure in this house, Madam Speaker. You have allowed Senator Ledama to cast aspersions on distinguished senators. When you allow him to rise on a point of order and say that this committee sneaked in a report that, first of all, needs to be deleted from the handside and the records of this house. Because, Madam Speaker, the Senate Minority Whip was seated here yesterday in the afternoon. There is a procedure through which you table reports. The order was called. The chairperson of that committee, whether you are there or you are not, is none of our business. What we are concerned about, Madam Speaker, is the fact that you have allowed a senator to cast aspersions on colleagues, saying that we sneaked business, or those colleagues sneaked business into this house. That cannot be left, Madam Speaker, on the record of this house, Madam Speaker. Because we know for a fact that this order was called up, a report was tabled, as is a normal procedure. Before we go on to the point of order that he has raised, Madam Speaker, I'd wish that for purposes of record, because this is a house of records, Madam Speaker, that Senator Ledama withdraws the offensive part of his, of his comments before we can move on to discuss the point of order that he has raised, Madam Speaker. We cannot allow a culture where if you do not agree with a particular report, you cast aspersions on your colleagues that you say it was... Secondly, he has said this report is serving selfish interest. That is very shameful, Madam Speaker, because I can see that a committee sat down, there are minutes of their, of their sittings. You want to tell me, Madam Speaker, that are we setting a practice and a culture now that when committees of this house sit, and not just another committee, this is a committee chaired by the Speaker, deputy, deputized by his vice, that they can sit down to transact selfish business. I was taken aback, and I demand, Madam Speaker, that Senator Ledama withdraws and apologizes to the members of this committee because he does not have to agree with it to make and cast aspersions on the members of his committee, Mr. Speaker, before we discuss whatever is raising. That cannot be left on record. Uh, before we proceed, before we proceed, before we proceed, uh, I think it is official and it was recorded yesterday in the proceedings of this House that the report was presented before the House. Whether it is proper before this House or not, that you be subject that you be subject to a certain verification which will be done by the speaker. But in the meantime, I would invite uh, Senator Ledama to withdraw the use of the word sneak and use different words. Uh, let's have order in the House. M Madam Speaker. Let's have order, Senator Ledama. Madam I, have, I have given a direction, Madam very Speaker. simple direction. The report was formally tabled. I was in this House yesterday. The report was formally tabled. We would request the use of parliamentary language so that if business is properly brought before the House, you could uh, use different words to describe the same thing that you're saying without using the sneaky language. So Ma I invite you, Madam Speaker, Senator no Ledama, I invite you to withdraw the use of the word sneak, then we proceed on. I can make a finding on the report. Madam Speaker, thank you for um, giving a directive. But what I would like to state here is that I said, and I think the answer will bear me witness, that when a report is sneaked in, and Madam Speaker, you know, the, major the majority leader, you know, is so emotional, and all I'm saying is that let us follow the procedures of this House. We have standing orders. He cannot come in here and I say that I'm against the report. I did not debate on the substantive matters on the report. All I did was open page one, two, and three. And when I opened page two, page three, it is quite evident. It's on my right. I could see clearly that it has only been... So, Madam Speaker, I, I will not be forced to take in words that I did not emit. Madam Speaker, I would like to request that the answer be provided so that, if indeed... I said that the committee tabled the report. I'll be more than happy 
to withdraw that sentence. But I said, if a report is sneaked in, because they, they, we have a secretariat, Madam Speaker. We have, I'm on a point of order. Madam Speaker, we have a secretariat. And if I raise an issue, it, will, it could be points of debate that I raised. So are you telling me that we'll now be gagged and we'll be forced to choose to use the right words that the majority Senator leader would Ledama. be comfortable with? Senator Ledama. So the standing order, Madam Speaker, I would request that because our standing orders provide that I substantiate. So can then, can, that stand, can, the, can the answer be brought here so that it can be able to attest to what the majority leader is alleging? Senator Redema, I am, I am presiding over the House. I have listened to you. I have heard your objection. Senator Ledama, I have given you a direction. Let's have order in the House. We intend to conduct some business today. Can you withdraw the use of the word sneaky? I have given a directive. Resume your seat, Senator Ledama. Resume. What is your point of order, Senator Mungatana? Madam Speaker, the business of this House must be conducted in order. Standing order number 99, Madam Speaker, forbids anticipation of debate. Madam Speaker, I have sat here waiting for the motion to be moved so that we are seized of the matter. Even before the majority leader has moved, something, you know, we don't want Felista bastarding, ma Madam Speaker. Let us be seized with the matter and then if there are issues, let Mr. Ledama be heard, but not before. Madam Speaker, you cannot gag the majority leader. Let him be heard. Let him be heard. I have given... I have not given you yet. Resume your, resume your seat. Resume your seat until I give you the permission to speak. I have, I have given you directions, Senator Mazayo. I am certain you understand those directions. Resume your position. Senator Mazayo, there are other people who have pressed the same. They are lined up, other honorable members. Senator Ledama, back to you. Withdraw the use of the word sneaky. I want to give a, a verdict on the report. Madam Speaker, that you come after he I have produced. requested for, this, for the answer to be produced. Upon the answer being produced, I'll be more than happy to withdraw. Madam Speaker, I was begging you to listen to me, to pay attention to me, with all due respect. I was asking you, Madam Speaker, please pay attention to what I'm saying. I never said that the committee sneaked in. That is what the majority leader alleged. Madam Speaker, that is why it, when something is in dispute, Madam Speaker. Taledama, does that amount to a withdrawal that you do it not It does say? not amount to withdrawal because I've requested you. And the standing orders provide that when you can request me to substantiate, the standing orders are very clear. You are, you are, you are, you are, your chair guided this house, indicated clearly that we will be guided by these standing orders. Nothing else. These standing orders. And what I've requested, Madam Speaker, is that produce the answer. If indeed, if indeed, what the, the, the majority leader is alleging is true, then I will stand, I'll stand corrected. Uh, I will give, I will give an opportunity for that answer to be produced by tomorrow and you'll be served with it and if you fail to substantiate using the answer, you'll be ruled to be out of order and sanctions will follow. Now, before we go to any other point of order, I want to make a finding. There are many requests for points of order. 
I want to make a finding on that report based on standing order 223. What is your point of order, Senator Mazaya? Senators, you must make it possible for the business of the house to be conducted. The style we are taking is not safe for the business of the house, and it's important you also respect the chair when you are given directions. Yes. With Senator Mazaya. With tremendous respect, Madam Speaker, the minority side has a right to also uh, a request for points of orders. But what we are witnessing now is not that way. They are not being accorded an opportunity to make points of orders. You have only allowed... Senator Mazzaio, you, have only, you, have you only are allowed dealing with the standing order from Senator Leda. Yes. I'm a point of order from there's, Senator Leda. There is a deputy minority leader. There is, a, there is a, the, the, assist, the, the, the deputy whip. There are other, 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 other senators from this side who also would like to make their points known. But you are refusing, Madam Speaker. And I don't think this is proper. Uh, Senator Mazayo, are you accusing the chair? I hope you are not. I have given opportunities to both sides of the house to address on the, on the point of order that was raised by Senator Ledama himself. And I have made a finding on it. So I request that you now resume your seat. Because what you are stating is factually incorrect. is your point of order that will be the last uh, point of order then i'll make a finding in with respect to that report madam speaker i thought we were out of this clearly we are not the the point of order raised by senator uh, ledama olekina and the contribution by my good friend the senator for uh, tana river on whether or not it's proper to anticipate a debate. Madam Speaker, those are two completely different things. What the point of order from the minority is, we are asking the chair to make a determination whether the report that is just about to be tabled or discussed or moved for, for debate is properly before this house. And, and, and Madam Speaker, you said we should be orderly. I'm trying to be orderly. Madam Speaker... Ma Ma Madam Speaker, uh, 223. Do you have a copy of it? Madam Speaker, he has demonstrated that 223.2 has been violated. That whereas the requirement is that five out of the nine senators should approve a report before it is tabled, in this case, only four have approved that report. Madam Speaker, the question that the minority side is asking the chair to make a determination on is whether that report, before it is moved, whether it is properly before this house. Lastly, Madam Speaker, this discussion on procedure and rules, Madam Speaker, you may need to give us direction where you sit, whether if a member of this house does table a report unprocedurally. And then later on, it is discovered that the report was not properly tabled. Does this house have a duty of care to our own procedures to correct that mess, or we live with it? I think you will not speak. Uh, Senator Wambua, if you had paid close attention to the direction I had given to the house just before I allowed you, to rise on that point of order. We were finishing on the parliamentary language used, the use of the word sneaky, and I said I would make a finding on the report, but you seem agitated, and therefore even not following through what the speaker is giving as directions to the House. Even a finding that that would be the last point of order, and then I would make a finding is expected by the House on the report. 
I have looked at the report, and the clerk can open that report again for me. Clerk, open that report again for me. And I have also looked at the studying order 223, subsection 2, the report of a select committee having been adopted by a majority of the senators shall be signed by the chairperson on behalf of the committee. I hope that is expressed. It's standing order 223, uh, subsection 2, and that should settle the matter. The report is properly before this house. And the adoption report, the adoption of that report is in the minutes. If you need the minutes, now, on that issue, we will make progress. No. Senator Ledama. Senator Ledama, there are many senators in this house. I will give I will give point of order to Senator Cheptumo. I have given the finding. Hey. You are going overboard, Senator Ledama. Don't do that. I have made a ruling. Point of order is by Senator Cheptumo. Let's have order in the house once again. Madam, Madam Chair, um, I, I think I, I just want to plead with my colleagues here that you've been able to give directions on the issue of the language used by the Senator Narok. And Madam Chair, the next question for you to determine which you have is if this report is properly before the House. It has been dispensed and with Ma Madam Senator Chair, Tito. you read the order, yes. which is clear. Mr. Madam Chair. Allow I, him, allow uh, Senator Cheptumo to finish his submission on the point of order. So, M M M M Madam, uh, Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, I think there is an intention by the minority side, Mr. Sp Madam Speaker, to derail the debate of this particular motion, Mr. Madam Speaker. And I'm saying so, Madam Speaker, because Nita, standing Senator order Senator Sifuna, 23, he's on a point of order. And I he's think so, he's so clear, and I want to plead with our members, Ms. And members uh, Madam Speaker, that let us make progress. Let us make progress. Because, Madam Chair, Madam Speaker, we need to move and deal with this matter. And I think the uh, standing orders are very clear. And, 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 and Ladema and, and my colleague here is a senior member of this House, Mr. Madam Speaker. It is only fair that we allow. It is the majority of the members of the committee to sign the report, and it becomes procedural in the House. And I think, Madam Speaker, it's so clear. I think on the report, honorable members, as, uh, Senator Sifuna, what's your point of order? Madam Speaker, my point of order is pursuant to that uh, Standing Order 223, and what my landed senior Cheptumo has just said, Madam Speaker. I don't know why some of our colleagues are imputing some negative or, uh, uh, you know, uh, notions on the minority side, Mr. Speaker, Madam Speaker. We have demonstrated to this House that if indeed we did not want to take part in any business of the House, we know how to do that. But we are here, Madam Speaker, as a minority side, ready to contribute our thoughts to these particular uh, matters that are on the, uh, on the order paper today. Madam Speaker, in my view, if the standing orders talk about a majority of members, 
it is a question of fact that is easy to establish from the document itself. If indeed you want to know whether majority of members of a committee attended a certain meeting, it is such a straightforward thing, Madam Speaker, that we don't understand why we have to fight about it. Because every person knows the membership of this committee. It is not difficult to establish a majority. That majority should be apparent from the document itself. From the documents that we have seen, Madam Speaker, only four members of that committee have signed the document. How is four out of nine a majority, Madam Speaker? So all we are saying, but I am on a point of order, Majority Leader. Please. Yeah, in but I have not finished. I'm finish on a point, the of point of order. Madam Speaker, I can assure you on behalf of the majority, minority side that nobody here is interested in playing any games. We are very, very interested in protecting the integrity of this house, including how business that comes to this floor is processed. We do not have a problem if the committee can go back and redo their report and sign with a majority that we can all see that this is a majority. It's a question that is very easily ascertainable, Madam Speaker. What usually exasperates us as a minority side, and I don't mean to impute any negativity on the part of the chair, but Madam Chair, we don't understand, Madam Speaker, how it is so difficult. How, how can something we are looking at from this position be different from something that you as the chair are looking at from that position. We don't I, understand how it is possible, Senator, Madam Speaker. Senator, wind up your start. Yeah, your... so, Mr. Madam Speaker, what we are saying is this. Please, we are all capable of establishing whether a document has been signed by the majority of the members. When we see such decisions, then we start questioning whether we have fairness in this House. Madam Speaker, from those documents, it is very clear that only four people out of the nine members have signed. So it is not a, a, a report that should be brought before this House. And please, let us not force issues, Madam Speaker. Let us correct where mistakes have been made, and we move forward together as a House. Uh, Sen what is your point of order, Majority Leader? Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker I, I, I had requested you early that, uh, and this is not the first time we are finding ourselves in such a situation, the minority of this house are beginning to set a very bad precedent, which unfortunately, Madam Speaker, they are getting aided by your office. Once the Speaker has made a determination on a matter, the practice of Parliament world over is that that, massa, that matter is seized off and you move on to the next business. Point number one. There is no way you can challenge the decision of the Chair. It's common sense, Madam Speaker. Number two, Madam Speaker, even if you wanted to allow them a second bite at the cherry, I want Senator Ledama, Minority Leader, Senator Wambua, to read the plain reading of the standing order they are quoting so that you understand the absurdity of the argument they are making. Madam Speaker, read standing order number 222. It speaks that the report of a select committee having been adopted, the debate they are having is adoption. That once the matter has been adopted, Madam Speaker, can I be heard? Do you allow, Protect allow me. minority side, Senator Mazayo, resume your seat, allow majority leader to complete his submission? No. Point of order, point of order. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker. Can you, can you allow majority leader? I am directing from the chair. Allow him to finish. Yes. Madam Speaker, a plain reading, standing order number 223, speaks to the signature of the chairperson or the vice chairperson or a member of a committee. Meaning, even if this report had been brought, Mr. Speaker, with only the signature of the chairperson alone, it will still have passed. That is a plain reading of standing order number 223-2. Madam you Speaker. Resume, resume your seat. He's on his You face. know, Madam Speaker, now, what, what we shall Senator not allow, Wambua, what we shall not allow, Madam don't Speaker. Don't push the chair any further, Senator Wambua. Madam Speaker. Can Madam you Speaker, allow? We shall not be intimidated. We shall Majority leader, majority leader, just resume your seat, majority leader. Minority side, let's have order. 
Let's have order. I have given a judgment. I have given a ruling on that issue. I have given a ruling on that issue. You have Senator Mazayo, this is the third time I have asked you to resume your seat. I will now take action against you, Senator Mazayo. Resume your seat. Resume your seat, Senator Mazayo. Now, Senator Mazayo, and the minority side, and the majority side, I have rendered a ruling on this matter. We proceed on with the next order. Let's proceed on majority leader with the motion. I have given I have given a direction. We are moving on with the motion. It will pend the order. It will pend the direction I have given Senator Ledama. It will come after what I have given as the direction to proceed on with the House. Proceed, Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, Madam Speaker, I beg to move that pursuant to standing order number 267 and 270, the Senate approves the fifth report of the Procedure and Rules Committee on periodic amendments to the standing orders of the Senate laid on the table of the Senate on Tuesday, 21st March 2023 and pursuant to the provisions of Article 124.1 of the Constitution and Standing Order 270 and 272. One, resolve to amend its standing orders as contained in Appendix 2 of the report. And two, orders that the amendments to the standing orders as contained in Appendix 2 to the report come into effect on the 11th of April 2023. Madam Speaker, this motion is after very good work that has been done by our Procedures and Rules Committee chaired by the Speaker, the Deputy Speaker, they sat down and considered various amendments that had been proposed to the standing orders, including amendments that had been proposed by some members of the minority side, Madam Speaker. The committee deliberated on the, on the, on the matters that had been brought before it, listened to the wisdom of those who had proposed this, the, 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 the amendments, Madam Speaker, and proceeded to make a conclusion. I am hereby, Madam Speaker, requesting the House that we do agree with the proposal that is being made by the Procedures and Rules Committee to allow the amendments as have been proposed. This is a beautiful amendment, Madam Speaker, because I know for a fact our colleagues in the National Assembly considered similar amendments and as we speak today have made it possible that beginning of next week, Cabinet Secretaries will be allowed into the plenary of the National Assembly to respond to topical issues and matters affecting citizens directly, as opposed, Madam Speaker, to the only available uh, platform where members sometimes have got to wait. You make a statement, request a committee, the committee goes and deliberates on the matter. Sometimes you as a senator that has made that request on behalf of your constituents is not even allowed to appear before that particular committee this is an additional mechanism, Madam Speaker, for senators to avail themselves in this House every Wednesday at 10 to 12 and invite cabinet secretaries who have questions to answer before this House, Madam Speaker, to sit at the designated place where it will be determined as per the rules of the Speaker and respond to questions and even subsidiary questions that are being raised by members of the Senate, Madam Speaker. I do not see how that, Madam Speaker, infringes on, Madam Speaker, the rights of members of this Senate who feel, for one reason or the other, that they do not want cabinet members to come to this House to respond. In fact, to the best of my knowledge, Madam Speaker, this is enhancing the practice of democracy. This is accountability at very high level, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I'd wish to challenge my colleagues on the minority side who have a problem with this to perhaps consult with their colleagues on the minority side from the National Assembly who chose to agree with this report such that if today we do not agree with what our Procedure and Rules Committee will be telling us. Can you imagine a situation 
Madam Speaker, where you will find Senator Sifuna, the point of order will come after he finishes moving the motion. Let him let him finish moving the motion. Thank you, Madam let Speaker. Let him finish. You respond. I'll I, give you a chance. I don't know. I'll give you I a don't chance. know, Madam Speaker, why the minority side feels fidgety about this particular issue. How this house resolves matters, Madam Speaker, is how this how how this house resolves matters is when you have let's a matter. Have, let's have You will order. have the opportunity to speak. They will choose otherwise. If they do not agree. I'm sure they will speak via their vote, Madam Speaker. Therefore, Madam Speaker, the Second Amendment, you remember that three weeks, for three weeks, this House could not move because of squabbles and fights on the leadership in the minority side. We have now made, I will ignore the hecklers, Madam Speaker, and proceed with my speech. Because, Madam Speaker, for three good weeks, squabbles in the minority side. Major majority leader. If you heckle, Continue use the parliamentary language. Minority will, side. I, I will, can you will, be? Let's have order will, once again. I will use Senator parliamentary Wira, language on sit. people who behave in a parliamentary if way. Sit. If you heckle, I will I will refer to you as I a heckler. Will request That's what you are. That's what you are. Honorable senators. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, this is a point. Three weeks ago. We could not make progress in this house because of squabbles in the leadership of a minority side. We have, Madam Speaker, I will ignore that there is somebody heckling in the house and continue. Madam Speaker, for three good weeks, we couldn't make progress. Part of what the Procedures and Rules Committee has recommended is that now, once your good office is furnished with a letter either from the majority leader, minority leader, majority whip, minority whip, on leadership on their side of any matter, within three days of sitting, you are supposed to make a communication. I do not understand why anybody will be so opposed to such good proposals because we are reacting to the live matters because we have seen the culture that is being set in this house, Madam Speaker, where when you do not agree with the decision of a speaker, you try and paralyze the business of the house by making the kind of either allegations, noise, and trying to interrupt other speakers as they make their contributions. Therefore, Madam Speaker, this is a very good proposal. I support it and wish to request members of the Senate, for those who believe in accountability and uh, diligent oversight, Madam Speaker, to support this report so that we can make progress together. Madam Speaker, I beg to move and request Senator Hilary Sigeyo Bomet, a member of uh, this committee, to second. Thank you, Madam Speaker.